Hey guys, Jengar here. Welcome to today's realistic review in which we are taking a look at the Yak-1 sitting at 2.3 battle rating in the Soviet line. This is a fantastic jack of all trades below 4000 meters and a very enjoyable plane to fly. I had a lot of fun in this thing. One of the, the first Yak, let's say, in the Yak line. And um, yeah, such a nice, decent plane. Uh, it is not a plane that excels at a certain point or is the best boom and zoomer or the most fantastic energy fighter or the most freaking awesome turn fighter in the world. No, but it is decent. And it is decent at everything. It has decent firepower, decent speed, decent maneuverability, decent performance although the performance is is slightly better than decent especially below 3500 meters but this is a jack of all trades that performs very nicely it overheats a bit badly but uh, for the rest this thing is just it's a decent performer and uh, <laughs> if you can transition between the roles a plane like this is gold for both beginners and veterans because veterans can shine in these things and beginners get a plane that is uh, very forgiving for making mistakes because you can do a little bit of turn fighting you can do a little bit of boom and zooming and you can do a little bit of uh, energy fight and she will not let you down in any of those roles so yeah the yak one i think this is also why the history of uh, russian bias started because many of the russian early planes are are this way just good you know forgiving planes solid and um, beginners especially beginners need that that's why beginners often think that soviet tree is the best tree but of course we veterans we know that that is not true <laughs> although the legend persists right <laughs> anyway let's get into this plane the yak one the maximum speed in this plane at sea level Without web is 480 kilometers an hour and with web 495. Now this is quite good speed at 2.3 battle rating. At the deck, at 4500 meters, still go up to 439 kilometers an hour and there is no more web here. At 4350 meters up, you will lose the web and it will do absolutely nothing for you anymore at that point. Uh, at 6,500 meters, still go up to 395 kilometers an hour. So it's definitely uh, a bit of a down uh, drop from the from the deck speed with the web to the 6,500 meters. Definitely not the best performer at the height, highest altitudes. But the drop is 100 kilometers, and well, that is not uh, out of the ordinary. So she, she's still somewhere in average when it comes to that uh, speed wise on the uh, on the higher altitudes the top speed in a dive is uh, 648 before she red lines and 700 before she rips apart now that is a little bit of a downer that is only a 52 kilometers an hour gap and this plane does accelerate quite nicely in a dive very good action so 50 kilometers an hour window before she rips apart from the red line doesn't give you a lot of time when you're in a dive that's why you see so many yucks ripping apart when you take them into a dive because people forget to watch when they redlining and pull out too late and they rip it happens a lot that's a, a thing you can definitely do against the yuck one and with a little bit less experienced a pilot you will absolutely be able to to make it rip for example this uh, this corsair here can easily uh, make the yak rip in a dive no problem at all this guy was turning with me you shouldn't do that with a plane that can turn decently well <laughs> control stiffening in the yak starts at 450 with a big tick in the roll rate so it really starts to compress there a little bit and at 550 she really becomes a little bit more sluggish the compression becomes a little bit more severe and you should definitely want to roll out and start pulling out of your dive if you're still in a dive by then because by the time you rolled over you will be over 600 kilometers an hour uh, stall speed in the plane is quite good with 120 kilometers an hour 
It is above average, definitely. And uh, firepower is good. You're running uh, in this plane with one 20 mm Schwack cannon with 110 rounds. And you also have two 7.62 mm Schwack machine guns with 620 rounds per gun, which is actually quite nice. The ammo load then is only average for the 20 mm and it's good actually for the 7.62 usually it's 500 rounds you're very lucky and it's very very good you get a thousand rounds but that doesn't happen a lot 620 rounds is quite good you also can equip this plane with 250 kilogram bombs and 200 kilogram bombs if you would want to but i don't know why you should want that i mean i don't want to weigh the plane down never want to do that in any fighter by the way <coughs> although you can the acceleration in this plane in a straight line is good in a dive it's even better, it's very good in a dive. Energy retention in the plane, in the horizontal, it's great. Really holds your speed well in a, in a straight line when you come out of your dive, see, really nicely. And it is also, if you can keep this plane from ripping and keep it between the red line and ripping while you're in a dive after somebody, you will often catch the enemy opponent while they are leveling out. This plane really has great horizontal energy retention. And in the vertical, the energy retention is also good. <coughs> the climb rate in the plane is decent. Can't say anything about it. Isn't bad, but it isn't particularly fantastic either. It is better on uh, below uh, 3500. So. Turn time in the plane is uh, above average, quite nice. And then it goes to decent when you deploy the flaps. The flaps, they do rip off though at 350 kilometers an hour, which is actually quite early and yeah so <laughs> flap usage needs to be done with attention and with care uh, you need a little bit of experience with that just like with uh, m many of the spitfires that also rip early the flaps on this one also rip very early uh, roll rate in the plane again decent nothing bad there nothing spectacular either but uh, yeah it's nice then we come to one of the other downsides of this plane, and that is the overheating, which is actually bad. Yeah, you see easily overheats, and <coughs> although it does cool off relatively easy as well, when you're in a straight line or in a dive, when you're climbing on the higher altitudes with some lower speed, um, it doesn't cool off so easily. So, not that you want this plane on the higher altitudes and, and, and there to be there on a... You know, on a permanent basis, you want to be below 4,000 meters, preferably, and stay away from the 4,350 meters where you lose your web, because the web on the plane is quite decent, but um, if you don't have it, it is something to be missed. So yeah, and uh, the performance in the in the vertical, the energy retention, um, but ex the acceleration and the engine performance mainly are better at those altitudes um, <clears throat> yeah so we come to the durability the durability is average it's a little bit of a mixed bag you are quite vulnerable in the dives and in wing rips this plane is uh, a little bit um, touchy there a little bit of, of something that you have to manage you have to be really aware of that uh, for the rest its frame it seems pretty sturdy it is, uh, it doesn't, it is not particularly vulnerable or something you have to watch. I mean, you don't want to get hit in any plane, but um, your ability for the rest is all right. But yeah, you do have those wing rips in a dive and that is not very nice. So overall, it's a, it's really a jack of all trades, a, th a plane that will not let you down easily. And um, that is just a solid performer it does everything decently well and uh, you can easily there we go for a flap by the way uh, that is below 350 where the where the but that is because i was pulling some uh, some stronger turns on the uh, and maneuvering in the with the ailerons if you do that combined it can rip a little bit more early but uh, overall it's it's in the 350 range but yeah that's an early rip for those flaps and um, 
it can mess up a dogfight if you're if you're not careful. And I found that out. I had actually not flown the the yucks in a while, and I had forgotten that they had these uh, vulnerable flaps. And uh, I do remember the dive, of course, and the dive vulnerability. That is something that um, many Soviet planes have, but particularly the yucks are uh, susceptible to this. Here we go for a nice German bombers. But uh, yeah, so I, I like it. I like the Yak one. And I'm definitely looking forward to going to the, through the Soviet ranks and flying more Yaks and, and the others. Uh, the LAs, the Lavoshkins and, and all the other Jazz, MiGs. It's going to be fun to revisit them all and uh, have some fun in them. But uh, particularly the Yaks were always one of my favorite Soviet fighter lines and um, this beginning one the first one has really not disappointed me had a good bit of fun in the plane and um, yeah she, she, she held up to her name fantastic little bugger that uh, is lethal in the right hands now let's see what we got for that ace rewards of course are not very spectacular for a uh, Regular line uh, fighter. We've got final blow, survivor, terror of the sky, 43,000 silver lines and 9,000 research points. Hey guys, so here we are after the match. Uh, the Yak one. It's a great begin of this line. It is a, a joy to fly, very versatile in the fighter roles. You can go from turn fighting to energy fighting to short boom and zoom runs in no time. He does things decently well in all departments i mean she's not an excelling boom and zoomer she is not the best uh, energy fighter out there although she's quite good below 3500 meters and a turn fighter dedicated she is in no way shape or sense but it is a great all-round fighter that will give you a lot of joy she's very strong in a lot of situations because of that versatility and very good to beginners it's a it's a very versatile play. A bit low on the ammo count for the cannon though. This is not great for beginners. But you have to be a little bit trigger patient in it. Otherwise you will run through those rounds fairly quickly. But uh, all in all I quite like the Yuck one. And I can definitely recommend you to fly her. And to get yourself acquainted with the Yuck line. Guys I hope you enjoyed the review. I want to thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment. And if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.